The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Hey, Bunny, guess what? Guess what? What's up? No guess. Um. Wow. Underarm sweat. No, 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 my cannabis friend. It's homework time once again on the Popon Film Podcast. <coughs> People of Eleanor, stop grabbing everything all the time forever. Oh, I'm, 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 this is about to fall. This is a bad intro. Okay. <laughs> stop grabbing things, Eleanor. People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your fandoms and kindly pay attention! Each week, the dreaded Council of Ambers selects a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of Carousel. A homework assignment that has been fortified, ratified, and stupefied with the expressed intent of bettering our listeners, nay, Dirty liberals everywhere. Yes. Except you, Michael Moore. <laughs> I don't know if you're helping. No. My tolerance with you has worn quite thin, good sir. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've cared about Michael Moore. You know who I feel the same way about? Mick Foley. Really? He has a new book out called Santa Mick, and it's a book all about his transformation from hardcore wrestler to actual Santa Claus. And it's like I'm flipping through the book, and it's all these Santa Claus pictures. Mick Foley released a Christmas biography, and I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just tapping out. I'm done. Yeah. I am so done with caring about Mick Foley. I didn't realize that I didn't care about Mick Foley anymore until he wrote a book about how much he loves Christmas. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done. Apparently, I'm done. Didn't realize it, but yeah, I'm well, finished with Foley. I, 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 I didn't mind that he was into Christmas in the one Christmas special that I had seen. Um, it's that it said it, it, it apparently doesn't stop from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Christmas is an all Eleanor. No, I said no, no, Jesus. I... We shouldn't have to put everything in the house up. Eleanor. Oh! But at can't the, draw his muscles. But at the same time, what exactly can we say about a wrestler? You know, I mean, everybody's so concerned about the injuries to football players now. Fucking wrestlers get paid to get dropped on their fucking heads. Yeah, you know, if it, you know, now that you mention this, if the if the because I had it in my hand, if what happened to Chris Benoit, can you imagine if that happened to a football player? Oh my God, there would be so many regulations. So oh much yeah. Much yeah. yeah, there would be so much of a focus on what happens in the NFL. And then there would be, you know how many documentaries on the fucking football limit we would have? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Don't, I don't know what we're talking about. Is no, that no, that's right? exactly what we're talking about. But like, mm-hmm. that's what we would get in the documentaries on the history of the football helmet and how it came to be and what it used to be when it first started. Like, pink yeah, skin that, fucking leather helmets because that's going to protect you. Yeah, yeah. To what we've got now and the importance of it and, you know, what should we do about the spinal injuries that are possible and leg injuries and blah, 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 blah. Is the patty enough? And what about steroids? Yeah. And what place does that have? It would yeah. be insane. Yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Sorry. No, Sorry. no, 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 that's fine. That's no. exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about. So, this week, Bunny, finally. Bunny, yes. Finally. Finally. We're getting around to talking about that Supernatural show. <laughs> never talked about Supernatural before on this podcast? No, has never come up. Yeah. 
Who are these people? Misha who? Who does he play? I have no idea. <laughs> We've never talked about this freaking show before. No. <laughs> yes, this week we are. And I still don't get it. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't mentioned that yet on the podcast at oh, all. Well, I, I'm mentioning it. I'm I about to mention it. it. Yeah, I'm about. Yeah, I'm about to mention it. This week we are watching the first official episode of Supernatural that we've ever watched here on the Pope on Film podcast, despite our constant and official focus on Supernatural. Uh, but we have been tiptoeing up to it. <laughs> huh? But we have been tiptoeing up to it. Yeah, no, we actually have we have been tiptoeing up to it. <laughs> this week we are watching Supernatural Season 6, Episode 15. Just because I'm getting louder doesn't mean you need to get louder, Eleanor! This week we are watching Supernatural Season 6, Episode 15, entitled The French Mistake! <laughs> now, first off. <laughs> first off. I am not as big of a fan of Supernatural as uh, Natasha is, of course, oh. and as uh, Bella is. Bella has watched all of them, and uh, it just loves Supernatural. In fact, she she has gotten in the habit of wearing one to three flannel shirts on any given day. Every single day. <laughs> Every single day. She goes to school. She's wearing she one, sometimes wear two or three flannels. <laughs> just to show her love for Supernatural, and also to try and stay alive. People who wear flannel uh, tend to live a little bit longer than some of the other characters. Yeah. Um, I'm not that. I'm not that big. Of a fan. I've watched a number of episodes, but I'm not that big of a fan of Supernatural. Number one, and uh, number two, Bunny. If I am not mistaken, uh, I believe that you have never seen an episode of Supernatural before. You have seen The French Mistake. Is that correct? Uh no, that's not true. I saw I, I I think I saw most of season one years ago, like nice. when it was in its third season, and yeah. and I I didn't like it. So yeah, that was when it was the Jared Padalecki show, also featuring this other guy. Yeah, that was in the beginning where it was definitely uh this is about two brothers. Of course, there is one star, and the star is this guy. <laughs> Now it's it, it has very much become about these two brothers. In the beginning of the show, it was more of the 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 Sam story. Yeah. So I'm not that big of a fan. You haven't seen that much Supernatural, yeah. and yet, and yet, we have talked at length about Supernatural. Yes, we have on this. Show. We have a history of talking about Supernatural on this show. We have talked so many times. We've, we've spent... I have pulled you into my orbit. Yeah, yeah. Natasha has pulled us into her orbit. We have. Yes. We, we even spent an entire episode talking about Misha Collins and his beautiful, kinky, weird face. Yes. When we watched his movie Stonehenge Apocalypse. I love him. Which was wonderful shit, by the way. Yes. Absolutely wonderful uh, Shiite. And, well, and, I have I have a theory. I, I I think that that what happened here is Misha Collins saw an opportunity when we swore to never talk about Adam Sandler again, and he snuck right in there. Yeah. So now it's just all about Misha Collins. Yep. Uh huh. Everything is Misha Collins. I'm, 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 I'm trying to help you guys. What what station is... Oh, Bella's got it? Okay, Bella's got it. I'm going to be outside, honey. Love you. The actual new episode of Supernatural is starting in like four minutes, so I am moving outside. We're doing a remote episode. Ah. I am outside right now. Waiting for the pizza dude. Waiting for the, the pizza, pizza dude. dude. Okay. Yeah. You gotta wait, man. The pizza dude's showing up. So, he, as my co-host Bunny has so masterfully said a few times before here on The Big Shoe, Bunny can have 
a long, lengthy conversation with yes. someone about Supernatural without having it ever actually watched the show before uh -huh. this week. Uh, and you do a good job explaining that. You can talk at length about Misha Collins. Oh, yeah, Misha Collins. Collins. Misha Collins, uh, the one who plays Castiel the Angel on Supernatural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the guy who played Dean on Gilmore Girls was Sam, and Sam was Dean. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a reason why we have both slightly subconsciously be dra have been dragged into the supernatural world, and it is this. The reason is this. My wife, Natasha, is a huge Supernatural fan. She's a Supernatural fan. She's a Misha Migo. Like, literally, <laughs> we'll be in the kitchen. We'll be in the kitchen, and she'll be cooking and also talking to me, and we'll be having a beer and just having a fun time, and then suddenly her phone will vibrate, and she's like, oh, Misha just tweeted. <laughs> like, that happened, I think, like, last night, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Misha tweeted. Okay, but at what point is that creepy? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm the same way with a couple of other people, so I can't <laughs> really say. She is a proud former player of Gishwas, which I don't have time to explain. We already explained it. Go listen to the Stonehenge Apocalypse episode. It's pretty goddamn funny. It's worth she a also Google. Has a, yeah, it's worth a Google. She also has a few shirts and a hat from some of the charity campaigns that the actors have done to raise money for good causes. Yeah. She eats, sleeps, and breathes Supernatural uh, because Supernatural is a cult, plain and simple. It is a cult. There are a number of other famous cults that are out there. Uh, let me pause this for a second because Pizza Dude just showed up, so okay. I'll be right back. Ugh. So, Supernatural yes. fandom, it is a cult. Plain and simple, it's a cult. And there are a lot of famous cults out there. I have a little list here of famous cults. Uh, Supernatural uh -huh. is a cult. Scientology. Yes. Cult. Lula Rose. Lula also Rose. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Pants, yeah. clothing that women can sell from home. Oh. And you buy, like, the clothes in bulk from Lula Rose, and then you sell it to the people you know. I have one or two people in my uh, social media feed that are constantly trying to get me to buy leggings, so that's really exciting. And then I'm like, oh, well, this is a cult, but I'm not going to tell you that because you're tr just trying to sell it and have fun and make a living and whatever. I'm not going to tell you about. And, of course, uh, all the people who sell Lula Rose say the same thing. Oh, I love my Lula Rose family. Oh, no. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, definitely a cult then. Uh-huh. Using that kind of freaking language. And then, like a, like, a week ago, I heard the news that, like, the... The FBI or whatever is investigating the Lula Rose Corporation for being a scam. Yeah. Tricking people into selling their, their crap. And it's like, oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Lula Rose, definitely on the list of cults. Doctor Who. Yes. Cult. Definitely a cult. Sensi, my wife. Uh, a few years ago, actually got out of the 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 dreaded sensi cult. It took a long time, and 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 it, it was difficult. On the positive side, our house smells amazing, but <laughs> uh, very proud of her for finally getting out of the dreaded sensi cult. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh huh, cult, absolute cult. In fact, I saw a documentary about it called uh, um. Wizards and Warriors. I don't remember what it was called. All I remember Mazes is Mazes and Monsters. Mate, there you go. Yeah. Um, you play Dungeons and Dragons once and you are killing people. I really got to show Genie that. We got to cover that movie one time. That's an amazing movie. Ma that is an amazing movie. Mazes and Monsters. Like We didn't Tom do Hanks. that? We haven't done that? No. Wow. That's like the kid's guide to the internet. Yeah. Like, holy shit. We haven't done this? Damn. Uh, and then Tom finally, Hanks's first made-for-TV movie. Yeah, super young, super crazy young. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then, of course, the biggest cult of all, Herbalife. Mm-hmm. Herbalife, the most dangerous cult in existence. Yes. Herbalife. Used to be Amway. Used to be Amway. Amway used to be it. Yeah, yeah, used to be Amway. Used to be Amway. Absolutely. But let me tell you something. But these are all Amway types. Yes, these are definitely They're all, like all the same Amway types. principle and shit. Yeah. And cults don't just take one person. No. A cult affects the people around you. Around that one person. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's like a sinkhole. Supernatural is a sinkhole. One person <laughs> becomes a supernatural fan, and then that person's fandom becomes a sinkhole that slowly but surely sucks in everyone around that person. Yeah. Supernatural is a sinkhole in the best possible way. Right. Right. I mean, I mean, I, I, if somebody shot 500 people in Texas, the last thing I would ever expect to hear would be supernatural fan. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like that would not be on the dossier at all. True. Is a cult. way to bring the show down, Bunny. Mention the no, mass sorry. murder. I'm, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm uh, I'm just Snapchatting myself, shirtless, recording the podcast. Okay. There you go. And I haven't drank. Good for me. So, uh, supernatural is a cult. It is a sinkhole. Uh, it just drags people down, and and Natasha is just all in on Supernatural. She is so all in uh-huh. on the world of Supernatural that I actually haven't mentioned this up until now. This is the first time I am mentioning this on the podcast. Uh, next week, yeah, Natasha is heading to her first ever Supernatural convention. Ooh. In a freaking Washington, D.C. Oh, my. She is leaving on Thursday and then coming back on Tuesday. Nice. And let me tell you something about these supernatural conventions. Um, Sam will be there. Dean will be there. Castiel will be there. The show creators, the show writers, like literally everyone shows up for these. Wow. It's not like, oh, I'm going to do a Star Trek convention. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get like one actor and some people who work behind the scenes. No, they show up to every supernatural convention. The guy who played Riley. Yeah. 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 (laughs) No, no, but uh, Sam will be there. Dean will be there. Uh, Padalecki will be there. Yeah. And uh, Misha Collins will be there. And she's going to get her picture taken with them. She's she's going. They have a question and answer sessions where fans can a- ask any question. And they always it, end up just hitting on each other. And then they, they it all then the cast likes to party afterwards. So they'll be at some bar somewhere getting drunk. Natasha has a shot at doing one of them. <laughs> Natasha has a shot of actually like meeting her her the the she she she's definitely going to at least meet Sam and Dean I believe she's she's getting a there are different types of pictures that you can pay for with the cast and I believe she is paying to get what they call the brother sandwich okay so the picture that she is getting with the cast will be literally her being hugged on both sides by both Sam and Dean. Oh my. What's that running? I I long ago told her not to tell me how much the pictures cost. Mhm. Long ago. Long ago I told her not to. Don't tell me how much this costs. Don't <laughs> tell me how much the pictures cost. I just don't, I, I love you. I also don't want to fucking know. <laughs> so You've saved the money. We can afford it. That's all I need to know. Okay. (laughs) 
this is a freaking dream for her. Sam will be there. Dean will be there. Misha freaking Collins. Freaking yeah. dream for my wife. And hey, kudos. Golf clap. Thumbs up. Very nice. She's going to her first con. I am freaking the fuck out about it. Though. You know what Misha Collins should do? And I might have to tweet him. My about wife. This. No, wait, wait, wait. Somewhere okay. when he's giving his presentation or talk or whatever he's doing, mm-hmm. he should tweet something so that he can hear everybody in the audience's phone go off. <laughs> I, I am. I fully believe that if an episode of Supernatural weren't on right now and I ask and I tell my wife that, that she would no doubt say that that has already happened. I would not be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Because that's a, I, I'm sorry, that's a little weird and creepy, but she's not hurting anybody. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't talked about this before, but but I am freaking the fuck out about next week. Mm-hmm. Because Eleanor still uh, breastfeeds, and she is... Uh, better start in, pinching your nipples now. <laughs> she's Yeah, she's in that terror. She's in that, that, that terror age. Yeah. And so uh, even though I'm not allowed to have time off during November and December and January, uh, I asked for the time off, and I told them why, and they agreed to give me this time off. Uh, so I will be off for this entire time. So I will be at home, a stay at home dad again with Natasha gone, taking care of the kids, picking people up from school, taking them to events, taking girls to work and, uh, just by myself taking care of the baby. I am nervous as fuck about it. I have (laughs) never had the baby. The baby hasn't been away from mommy this long. Yeah. Ever. She's, you know, she's been gone for maybe a day or half a day. She's never been gone for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Well, so, you, the, the one thing that you really have to do is that as soon as Tasha is gone, you tell Eleanor she's never coming back. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, because I'm, it'll, 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 it'll take, it, it'll be easier for her to understand that her mommy has run off at this age than something as complicated as no mommy just went to a supernatural co- convention yeah she'll be yeah. back in a yeah. few days <laughs> natasha's plan is actually to, she's not going to uh, believe that she's going to she's going to be thinking no no mommy's never coming back no mommy's never so you yeah, lead with that is at that age yeah you she lead that with age. that and then when tasha comes back it's a nice happy surprise yeah, that's good thinking. That's what I'm going to tell her. Mommy's gone for good. She left us for a uh, Brazilian helicopter instructor. Yes. <laughs> Come fly with me, Chiquita. <laughs> so really nervous about next week. I'm f- fairly certain I can record the podcast. I'm not 100%. Okay. I'm not 100% certain I'll be able to record the podcast. We'll see. We'll just see. We'll just see what happens. We'll just see what happens. So. (laughs) Now with extra screaming. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, Right. So I I don't know what's going to happen next week. But it's going to be fun for me. So the French mistake is the first actual episode of Supernatural we've ever focused on here in the podcast. Yes. So at first, this is what I was going to do. At first, I was going to get to the middle of it. Uh Uh-huh. But but no. Our listeners, all 12 of them, Uh uh-huh, they deserve more. More than just getting to the middle. So instead, I got to the bottom of it. Uh Uh-huh. Originally, I just went to the middle, but then I said, no, I need to go all the way down. Uh Uh-huh. To the bottom of it. I really wanted to understand the world of Supernatural. To understand the show. To really get into the into the mind of Supernatural fandom. So what I did is I went to the internet. Good old trustworthy internet. You yes. know, the World Wide Web. My parents just installed it. 
<laughs> so I wanted to really get a feel for the show. What was the show about? What did the show deal with? What were its themes? What, what, what was happening to these people? So I got on the Googles and I started Googling topics that I thought would help me. I Googled supernatural, supernatural plus relationships, mm -hmm. supernatural plus Sam plus Dean. Okay. I thought, what are these brothers about? Is there a rivalry? Are they upset? Well, maybe I should Google things that might uh, be involved that supernatural plus family discipline. Okay. Supernatural <laughs> plus fighting plus love. And so now that I've done all of this Googling, uh -huh. now I know, I know what Supernatural is all about. What it's all about. Again, thanks to the good old internet. So let me <laughs> tell you, Bunny, what Supernatural is about. What, what I've learned that Supernatural is about thanks to my findings, okay? Okay. Okay. Supernatural is a CW TV show about two brothers named Sam and Dean. And when they're not busy fighting monsters and demons, they're fucking each other. Yes. They are f fucking each other all over the place. They're fucking each other in their Impala. They're fucking each other in a haunted house. Fucking each other in an <laughs> abandoned a uh, warehouse full of ghosts. They're just fucking all over the place. Putting it in their butt. Putting it in their mouth. Tying each other up. A lot of sex on the show. A lot of sex. Okay? <laughs> and then there's an angel, Castiel Cast, that helps them. Helps them fight these demons. Help them in, their, in the eternal fight between good and evil. Yeah. And Angel is also fucking them. Sometimes he... <laughs> Sam, sometimes he fucks Dean, sometimes he fucks both, but everyone knows that it's Dean that casts fancies because they're in love. And I mean seriously in love. Holding hands, making out, tying each other up, whips. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, 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 wing kink, which I didn't even know was a thing. But what apparently it's a thing. <laughs> when you're kinky, like doing sexual wing play. Wing play. Yeah, wing kink. It's wing fetishes. Like, if you want to have sex with, like, an angel and the angel's wings, that's a thing happens all the time in the world of Supernatural. That's what I learned thanks to Google. I, 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 I don't know why. I, look, as long as furries exist, why should we be surprised at that? That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Then there's a character named Bobby, and although... The brother Sam and Dean, their parents are dead. Bobby is an older hunter, kind of acts like a father figure. Occasionally he's alive, sometimes he's dead. Yeah. And occasionally Bobby, being the father figure, needs to discipline the boys. So he sometimes he ties Sam up, sometimes he ties Dean up, sometimes he sometimes he ties Sam and Dean up together. And again, <laughs> a lot of fucking. A lot of fucking. Fucking each other every which way. Oh, so much fucking they do. Yeah, and... and, and well, that and, was the and, guy who plays Negan now, right? Wasn't that the no, father? No, he played the father. He played the father in, like, the first couple of seasons. I'm talking about uh, someone who comes in in, like, the third season or the fourth season. Oh. The older hunter named Bobby that helps them out. Um, but his name is... Um, uh, his name is the name of the uh, executive producer slash creator of the show. And they make a joke about that. His name is, uh, the character's name is Bobby Singer. So Brian Doyle Murray in this episode plays the actual like creator of the show whose name is Robert Singer. Huh. So they make a joke about that. Wait a second. Your name is Bobby Singer? <laughs> so the character of Bobby is named after you? Who does that? <laughs> who just gives them names a character in their own show after themselves <laughs> so i like that so anyway uh yeah uh kudos to the cw for showing such hardcore pornography on their station i didn't think that a show with so much gay sex could be on a tv station but man yeah. it's just so much sex uh incest tentacles Friends turning into lovers, lovers turning into friends, lots of hate fucking, 
Wing King. Wings. The boy's parents are dead, but sometimes the mom's alive and fucking him. Sometimes the dad's alive and fucking him. Sometimes the mom and dad are alive and fucking him. At least that's according to some of the uh, the fiction I wrote. There's a lot of the aristocrats. <laughs> yeah. So kudos to the CW for showing such sex on the show. Can't believe that there is so much sex on there, but apparently there is, according to Google. Mm-hmm. And the internet is never wrong. No. So I'm glad that I got to the bottom of it. Really happy that I did so much work on this. Wing kink. Wing kink. Yeah, wing kink. And a lot of tentacles. My wife's really into tentacles right now. I <laughs> That never did anything for me. No. Yeah. Never did anything for me. Uh, I'm, I'm not Japanese. No. Yeah. Not Japanese. Yeah. I believe, if I'm not mistaken... Scary, scary people. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that a underage schoolgirl getting raped by a tentacle monster is actually the Japanese flag. (laughs) Except, Except it happens in a white room and the tentacle monster can curl himself up into a uh, red ball. And that's actually the flag. The 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 raping tentacle monster has his back turned. So when you see the <laughs> Japanese flag, that's actually what's happening on the other side of the red dot. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent true. Why are this... we more afraid of the Japanese? Uh, you know what? There's something really I wrong with it. them. I've always felt really bad for the Japanese, but that's that's. <laughs> Primarily just because their country gets destroyed by so many monsters. This is true. You know? Uh Uh-huh. This is true. Like, oh, oh, poor Japan. (laughs) Oh, never would have seen that coming. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Fucking Gigan. Yeah. Yeah. So I just feel bad for the Japanese. (laughs) I want. I man, but but we as Americans really do need to catch up with the Japanese it, it, with when it comes to having used panties for sale in vending machines. Yes, we are way behind as a nation in that. I was watching something stupid on Roku somewhere. Something I, stupid I, on Roku? Now yeah, you're talking crazy. I, I think it might have been the hypnotic eye. I'm not sure. But it had all little weird clips, you know? One of those kinds of shows. Yeah. And you just let let the weirdness play. And I'm walking by the television, and I look, and it's Ghidra fighting some kind of robot. It wasn't Ultraman. It wasn't Inframan. I don't know. I don't know who uh, this robot was. Was it Jet Jaguar? It was not Jet Jaguar. Was it Jet Jaguar? Then I don't know. It was Silver. Huh. And it wasn't Ultraman. But definitely in that family. I think it's it's some robot that got lost to time. But he was fighting Ghidra. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I know that. Back in the day, in the 60s and 70s, they did, like, uh, use those costumes for various Japanese TV shows and whatnot. Yeah. So, I don't know. But, uh, the the French Mistake is one of a handful of meta episodes. I'm really fond of the episode where the boys go to a supernatural convention. Mm -hmm. I, I really like the idea that these, that Sam and Dean learn that their adventures are actually being written by a an author that that has been written by an author for years so now there's a fandom to them although yeah. people don't realize they're real they think they're fictional characters so they go into the supernatural convention and everyone's dressed like them and talking like them and it's really it's a cute episode yeah. my wife is fond of the episode where they where um they uh, the boys 
see a female high school musical version of Supernatural, mainly for the angelic version of Carry On My Wayward Son that they sing at the end of the episode. Okay. Um, the, the song specifically is kind of like their theme song. It represents these boys and their struggle, their endless war. And then one day, maybe these boys will stop fighting monsters and demons and have a chance to rest in the sweet, sweet release of death. Yeah. Anywho, season six, episode 15, the title comes from the movie Blazing Saddles, which is one of the reasons why I chose this episode. Yes. Because there's a connection to other movies we've done for the podcast. And the reason why they chose that as the title is because The French Mistake is the song that plays in Blazing Saddles, where the cowboy movie breaks the fourth wall mm-hmm. and and goes into another movie, which is a good metaphor for this episode because the boys literally break through a literal fourth wall. Yes. In this episode. I love this episode. I love any episode of a TV show that goes meta like this because it allows the show to sort of poke fun at itself and, and show a bit of realism. And when I'm when I think of meta episodes, of course, my mind goes to let us not forget the meta episode of the Cosby show where where Bill Cosby roofied and then raped the entire cast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a shocking episode of the Cosby show. Theo was never the same. No. <laughs> that. You could tell that his sweaters were a bit less colorful. Yes. The, the, the reason why I love meta episodes like this one is because a meta episode allows the show a, a show to, to not take itself too seriously and sort of poke fun at itself. And Jesus fucking Christ, Supernatural needs that. Yeah. The show can pe- be pretty dour at times. And it definitely needs to have more episodes where it doesn't take its own mythology way too seriously. That's one thing that I don't like about shows. You know, when you're watching a show and then there's so much mythology built into the show that the show um, has its head too far into its own ass. Yes. So an episode like this is really fun. I would say Buffy the Vampire Slayer got its head way into its own ass. Oh yeah, yeah. They got yeah. they got a movie with Paul Rubens in it. <laughs> Paul Rubens and Luke from Nine Hundred Two One Zero, and turned it into this deep mytholo- mythological who's he what's it show. Yeah, with its own universe. And 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 if I may, I don't know Supernatural, but I know a lot of shows. So if I may, I would like to tie Supernatural in with the show Rick and Morty, if I may. Okay, please do. Okay. In Rick and Morty, there are uh, an infinite number of universes. So there is an infinite number of Ricks out there and an infinite number of Mortys out there. Right. So a number, a, a massive number of the Ricks decided to get together and work together and live together and, and, and have their own life. So there's a there's a planet in a universe out there somewhere where there is a, there is a that is that's the planet of the Citadel of Ricks. <laughs> and that's where a number of the Ricks and Mortys live. And there's there's a, a, a cool Rick. He wears sunglasses and he's cool. There's fly fisherman Rick. There's businessman Rick. There is gangster Rick. There's a bunch, there's an infinite number of Ricks and Mortys and a number of them live here. And the, the Citadel of Ricks is run by the council of Ricks and they're the old elder statesmen and they run the Citadel and they have a tendency to go through the multiverses hunting down what they call rogue Ricks. <laughs> Ricks that are too dangerous and might threaten the other multiverses out there. And in the beginning of season three, Summer is for the first time going to the Citadel of Ricks and and being brought forth in front of the Council of Ricks. And Summer asks Morty, why do all of these Ricks, why are they hunting our grandfather? And 
as is evident on the show, Rick and Morty, Rick hates himself. Yeah. He is the smartest man in existence. And so he's so smart that he realizes that life is meaningless and none of us are here for a reason and there's no point to any of it, which is why he does a shit ton of drugs and drinks all the time. He just hates his life and he hates himself. <laughs> so when you look at a multitude, an infinite number of Ricks, then th not only do they hate themselves, but they hate all of the other themselves. That would make sense. So uh, Morty says to Summer, um, uh, they hate Grandpa because if there's one thing that Ricks hate, it's themselves. And our Grandpa is the most himself. <laughs> and that got me thinking of Supernatural. Because let me tell you something. One thing I like about the Supernatural fandom that you won't see in the Star Wars fandom and that you won't see in a, in a Doctor Who fandom, you won't see in, in other fandoms. Yeah. One thing I like about Supernatural fans is that they are very honest about the thing that they are obsessed with. Yeah. Because Star Wars fans, like I saw the new Star Wars preview, uh, the new like minute long tv spot that has these extra scenes and luke a, a picture of old man luke inside of the millennium falcon and, and like my my instinct i i said it without even thinking it i just went oh fuck star wars yeah. <laughs> and then emerald kind of looked at me and like hmm and i'm like yeah I, I that came out naturally but just yeah fuck star wars i'm so done with star wars i still consider myself a, a star wars fan but i just fucking hate these new goddamn star wars i'm just done with star wars yeah i'm still a star wars fan i just hate star wars you don't <laughs> see you don't see star wars fans like that you must love this thing to be a fan if you do not love it you are not a fan get out of our fandom but if there's one th group of people that hate supernatural it's the fans of supernatural <laughs> Like w Natasha will be the first person to tell you, oh, this is not a good show. <laughs> this is a bad show. The special effects are usually pretty horrible. This is really cheesy. It's written bad. But she takes it to a new a newer level where she's like, oh, you know, it, this this episode's not going to be good. It's going to be a horrible, horrible episode. And let me tell you why. Uh, writer Brian P. wrote it. <laughs> oh, God. Like, yeah. like, like, I don't know, like, I, that's a name I just made up, but still, she knows the writer, she knows, like, like, yeah, Supernatural fans hate Supernatural, oftentimes, <laughs> and I like that, it reminds me of Rick and Morty, Yeah, Rick hates himself and hates all the other himself, Supernatural fans are very honest with their show, <laughs> I like that, They're, they are the first ones to start shitting on things. I just can't get into this show. It's it's just not happening. But did you like this episode? I thought this was a good episode. I thought that that it's it's so novel that even if you've never seen an episode of Supernatural, and even if you don't like the show, this is still a cute, funny, stupid, lovable episode. Yeah, it, it had a certain amount of fun. I mean, I think you would really need to actually watch the show and be yeah and know the characters to get a lot of the jokes yeah you know I, so so for me it was fairly over when when it, as soon as you knew what was going on you know as soon as they realized oh we're these guys from the show yeah it, it, it was it was kind of over there except for misha collins getting shot <laughs> yeah yeah very that, sad that, that cool. yeah very sad to see Misha Collins shot, but I like the fact that they created what I felt was an honest, an honest Misha Collins, which is, oh, guys, I'm going to tweet this. Yes. <laughs> like a Misha Collins that has his normal voice and is always on social media. I liked that. Yeah. Because as far as I can tell, that's very much a real thing. <laughs> Uh, very, and, and it's also nice to, to hear Misha Collins without his Batman voice yeah. because he is definitely, um, he's definitely macho man, Randy savaging himself with that freaking voice. <laughs> oh, so you only want me to be in four or five episodes. Great. Well, since I'm only going to be in a small amount of episodes, 
I'll do my voice like this. <laughs> this is my voice for when I'm a character on this show. It should be fine. It's not like I'll be doing this show for the next 10 years. <laughs> this is the voice I'll be doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, I seriously, you watch Supernatural and it's like, what are these guys having a Batman off? A Batman off. Dean. Yes, Sam. We need to call Castiel. Castiel, come here. What? Wait, who's talking? I think I am. No, that was me. <laughs> Dean. Basically, I just I just did an impression of every episode of Supernatural. Good. Cool. Yeah. That was every episode of Supernatural. This aired in February of 2011. Uh, Balthazar sends them to an alternate universe where Supernatural is a television show and they have they are in the bodies of the actual people who do the show. Yes. Uh, Balthazar is a demon, but um, the 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 lines of delineation between angel and demon are real sketchy in the world of Supernatural. So Balthazar is a demon, but he's also a good guy, helps the guys out. Then there are angels who are assholes that Cass has to kill. Sometimes Cass is a dick. It's it it's all a bit confusing. Um, by the way, the tweets that Misha Collins does are real. He pretended to tweet when he was recording the show, but then when the show aired, he actually posted the actual tweets as they were going on nice. in the show. Nice. So that literally you're watching Misha Collins tweet on the show and then suddenly your you know phone vibrates and you look and he just tweeted that. <laughs> it reminded me of something see, if that, you're, I mean I could see that being a whole lot of fun if you're into no. the show, you know? Yeah. I mean I would find it fun to watch it and be like I know when he tweeted that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a yeah. little it's a little piece of stupid insider information. You yeah. know, it reminded me of something that Dan Harmon did for the beginning of season two of Community. Like a, right before season two began, uh, uh, fans of the show Community were asked to follow these 10 Twitter accounts. Yeah. So I, f I found these 10 Twitter accounts that had never tweeted anything before, and I followed them. And then a half hour before the new season of Community premiered, you were to watch your Twitter because um, a scene would play out on your Twitter that would set up the episode of Community. Okay. <laughs> And it was a real, real uh, ambitious thing that they did, but they pulled it off, and it was really weird. Are you going to bed? Okay, I love you. No, Give me... no, 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 no. Oh, you want me to put you to bed? Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause the podcast. Okay. So that I can put Maxwell to bed. Okay. Actually, hold on. I'm going to finish this story, and then I'm going to pause the podcast. So... So the, the, the accounts you were supposed to follow on Twitter were the were supposedly the Twitter accounts of all of the people on the show. Yeah. That all reminds of the characters me on the show. That's and so they started tweeting like a conversation between themselves on Twitter. And then there was one account that you were supposed to follow called Old White Man says that would tweet anything that uh, the Chevy Chase character just tweeted. And I was confused by that. And I'm like, wait, like, I, I see what they're doing. All of these characters are having a conversation on Twitter right now before the show begins. And they're talking about things that no doubt will happen in the future episode. And that's a really amazing interactive thing that they're doing. But why is this one account just retweeting everything that Chevy Chase says? And wouldn't you know it, that is a big plot in the episode that uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Donald Glover's character sets up a Twitter account called Old White Man Says, where he <laughs> tweets anything that Chevy Chase says. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is uh, this is awesome. And I try and remember that because Community was a long time ago. But I try and remember that story because that's an awesome little cute interactive thing, you know? Yeah. But yeah. that just reminds me about the, the Cloverfield conspiracy. Go put Maxwell to bed, and I'll tell you when you come back. Okay, cool. I will be back. Okay, Maxwell, let's get you to bed. Okay, I am back. I am here. 
Now, what were you going to say about what? The Cloverfield, uh, the Cloverfield conspiracy, um, which is a weird, cool little fun thing um, from the two Cloverfield movies. Because the first one had a lot of viral marketing. So there were websites and things like this. There were company names that you can look up for Cloverfield all in the first movie and stuff like that. And then they used, they used the stuff from the viral marketing for the second movie. So you can go back and you can look at like his letters to his daughter and stuff like that. And there's a whole conspiracy built around it. Not, not like a real conspiracy, a conspiracy concerning the two movies. Yeah. And how the things hmm. interrelate. It's it's really interesting. You should check it out. The Cloverfield Conspiracy. I think I will. I saw the first one, but I never bothered to see the second one. It just it just upsets me. It upsets me when we want to do a sequel. So we'll get the script for this totally unrelated movie and rewrite it so that it's a script for our sequel. <laughs> That's how we got Ocean's 12. Mm -hmm. So. Like I, I just hate it when people do that, and that's what they did there, you know? Well, it's better It's better than either of the movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the conspiracy, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, because it's, it's, it's fun conspiracy that you don't have to worry anybody's going to get killed over, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um... In in real life, just to be clear, in real life, Jared Padalecki and whatever the other guy's name is, I forgot, are best friends. But I like the whole thing that they do in this episode that, oh, at least they're talking again. <laughs> you know, because that's the sort of thing you would expect, the TV show season six. Yeah. And um, one thing that I learned, uh, Lorelei, Luke and Lorelai in Gilmore Girls. Yeah. Yeah, they hated each other in real life. Really? Yeah, apparently, uh, dude, Luke Danes, uh, whose name I will never remember because he is Luke Danes for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, he was a f fairly serious conservative type guy and it believed in family values and believed that no matter what Luke had going for him, uh, Lorelai should end up with the father of his child, of her child. Oh, okay. And that's just that's just what he believed. So he didn't like the whole getting together with Lorelai thing, and so they didn't talk, and there was a lot of fighting and yada yada yada. <laughs> I, think I read about it in an old TV guide back when that was still a major thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, for a small time, Dean in real life was living in uh, Adelecki's pool house for a while. Really? Okay. Yes, and also I'm pretty sure Dean in real life is one of those artsy C. Torello movies that you say looks good but never see. <laughs> he's doing a lot of those now yeah he's doing a lot of those are, are when he was in the pool house were they fucking probably there's a lot of fucking going on okay at least according to googling supernatural <laughs> also brian doyle murray i i just love this man was he the director yeah Oh shit! I okay, Murray. he fucking looks familiar to me too. That's that's another Paul yeah. Reiser. Yeah, yeah, still alive and kicking uh -huh. uh, for all these goddamn years. He's got to be like ninety years old now, but he still has like the energy that he did like ten or twenty years ago. A character actor's character actor. Damn right. Love that freaking man. 
and I like how they use the freeze frame because when they're talking, when 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 Sam and Dean first go into this other dimension, the producer and director have this conversation of, well, what should we do? Well, how about this? Here's here's an idea. What if they go through the wall and then we freeze frame and then fade to black? And Brian Doyle Murray is like, ah, it's kind of artsy. Ah, oh, you know what? Screw it. It's season six. <laughs> and so at the end of the episode, when the boys finally leave this dimension and crash back into the normal universe. Yeah. When they cut to commercial, they do exactly what they said they were going to do on set. They literally go through the wall, freeze frame, fade to black. Exactly how they said they would on the show. <laughs> I like that little touch. Yeah. Yeah. Now I got a question. I got I I, I got a question. I I was wa- rewatching this episode with with, with uh, Bella and Natasha. Yeah. And the whole gang. And the first thing I said was, okay, if I got, if I am Sam Winchester and I suddenly end up in the body of Jared Padalecki, the actor who lives in this freaking mansion, Uh one of the first things that I would do is get a credit card or two and put it in my wallet. Uh Uh-huh. And... And when I go back to my dimension, will I still have this credit card? That's a good idea. If it, it, and if and then Natasha said you'd probably have the credit card, but it wouldn't work. And I'm like, well, then I would just put a, a five thousand dollars in my pants. <laughs> that would be the first thing that I do. This guy's rich. I'm going to put as much money into my pants as possible. And then when I go back to my regular dimension, I'm pretty sure I'll still have a pan- pants full of money. <laughs> at the end of the episode, they're like, oh, we're back. We're just being Sam and Dean. Uh-huh. And we're broke. And I'm like, dude, you were just rich. Can't you? Couldn't you have just held on to a bunch of that money? I'm pretty sure that would have worked. I don't know enough about interdimensional uh, travel to know if this would work, but I'm pretty sure that it would work. I, I, I'm i pretty sure it would work too. And you know, why not? It's, I mean, it is your money. Yeah. You're not stealing anything. You have earned this money. No, no, you're not stealing it. It's yours. Uh-huh. Another dimension yours, but it's still yours. Well, well, it's another, another dimension yours, but it's another dimension yours that got that money by making your ass fight demons and shit. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, you're more entitled to it than Jared Padalecki is. That's what I'm saying here. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite episodes. Another one of my favorite episodes has to do with Balthazar, the demon that sent them into this alternate dimension. It's a really funny episode, and all of these people are dying, are being killed off. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, all of these people keep dying mysteriously. There's got to be a connection. What's the connection? And they're doing research, and they're like, hey, I found a connection, but it's a weird one. What's the connection? Well, it turns out that all of these people who've been killed, they're all related the people who sailed on this ship a long time ago. Oh, what's the name of the ship? It's called, um, huh, the Titanic. Hey, have you ever heard of the Titanic? Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. Oh, just got to look up into what this Titanic thing is. Let's see. Titanic was one of the largest uh, ships of its time. It had a cruise once, and everything went fine. Huh. So why would these people... Why would the relatives of these people be getting killed? <laughs> Turns out the ship had a close call where it almost crashed into an iceberg, but then the captain noticed it and steered away from it, and everything was fine. So now, why are these people getting killed? So finally, they tracked down Balthazar, and Balthazar's like, oh yeah, I did it. I went back in time and s- s- saved everyone. Stopped the boat from being crashed. And the boys are like, 
but why this ship? I don't even know. What's the big deal with the Titanic? Why would you save it? And he goes, oh, I saved it because I hated that movie. And I <laughs> hate so Lee Dion. I always hated that song. And the boys go, wait, who's Celine Dion? And Balthazar says, see, exactly. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I just love that so much. <laughs> They're like, he saves the Titanic from crashing, so no one knows the Titanic. Uh-huh. Like, damn, I would do the same thing. <laughs> I would do the exact same thing. Yeah. Anyway, Supernatural is pretty good, especially the funnier episodes like this one. Um, We may come back to the Supernatural well down the line here. I don't know, but there's a bajillion of them, so... um. I think that, if anything, it's good. It's just good business for us to watch and talk about Supernatural. In the same way that my blog was really popular when I was blogging about watching Firefly for the first yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hundreds and thousands of people wanted to read what I had to say about Firefly. So it just makes good business sense for us to watch and talk about and riff on Supernatural. <laughs> what I'm saying I is... I will do my best, damn it. Yeah. My wife has a big popular fandom, and we should explore it. Yes. I'm yes, we about, should. Yeah. I'm all about ex exploitation. I, I have always been all about exploitation. I, I have I have no yeah. problem. I remember your blog was o always did its best when you put up tits. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh huh. I remember I had a a uh, picture of uh, Jenna Bush's vagina. <laughs> now it's like just to be clear, I'm posting this on my blog for one reason, um, to fight Republican control of the White House. Here's the president's daughter's vagina. <laughs> if you if you don't want to see it that's fine it's going to be somewhere else it's the internet yes yeah. anyway that is it for homework this week and we honestly literally on listerally uh -huh. on on literally that's hard to say we sincerely hope that your, your hearts, minds, and bank accounts have all been suitably opened. Ah, uh, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, bucko, muchacho, buckchacho. <laughs> Combination of the two. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are once again, once again, we are heading to the calm familiar waters of YouTube with a good old-fashioned playlist. Nice. But, 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 This isn't your typical playlist. No uh, drive-in commercials. No uh, funny business. No SNL. None of that crap. It is a playlist of music videos. Okay. It is a playlist of seven music videos that we are going to watch and discuss. Okay. Bizarre music videos. Yes. I got some weird ones here. I got a weird Primus one. I've got one from... I've got a, a Christian rap video in there. <laughs> I've got a bizarre video from the 80s that apparently was, at the time of its release, taken seriously. A strange country song with a lot of screaming. Um, again, Primus. I, it, it's on oh, YouTube. Oh, by the way, though, by the way, s since you talk about weird country songs, after watching yeah. What Is It, Jeannie did Google Johnny Rebel. Oh, he's got a lot of oh, songs. Oh, God. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, he's yes. got a whole lot of songs. <laughs> so many. Yeah. No, he's got a lot. I They used to play him a lot on um, Howard Stern way back in the day. Oh, yeah? When okay. I could listen. To, yeah, when I could listen to him for free. When I could listen to Howard Stern for free on the radio. Yeah. Before he went to Sirius XM and I 
and stop giving a crap about Howard Stern. <laughs> yeah, my brother bought a Sirius XM radio and subscribed to Sirius just so he could listen to more Howard Stern. And I'm like, dude, I'll listen to Howard Stern for free. Yeah. I'm not paying to subscribe to listen to Howard Stern. Bitch ain't getting my money. I, I don't know. Howard no, Stern no. is something like, like I will like him for a little while, then I will get to detest him, and yeah. then I'll go back to liking him again. Yeah. yeah. So the, the playlist is on YouTube. It is called TPOFEP148 Music Playlist. It's on my YouTube account, Reverend Steve G. TPOF EP 148 Music Playlist. Seven videos that we will be watching and listening to and discussing. That is next week. So join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut on that bitch. And cut. Uh-huh.